Hi everyone, I just wanted to share a quick tip that I've been doing with my brand new Spellbinders tags. Excuse me, Spellbinders Shape Abilities. This is number S4322 and this one is S4235. So this one is called the Gromit Tags and the other one is called the Fancy Tags. Um, I don't have any stamps that fit inside of these little phrases. I may have one that says like, thank you. So I wanted to create a file where I can fit any words I want in there. Now if you know of any stamp sets that are out there specifically for these um, that have different sentiments and things like that, please let me know because I'm just not familiar with them and I'd love to see them and what they have out there. So I decided to work with what I've got. So this is what I decided to do. What I did was I went into my word processing program which I just have Microsoft Word and I created a sheet and what I did on this sheet is I created three separate tables with a border that was the exact size of the inside of these dies. So I measured them with my ruler and I made each one of these individual tables that size. So now let me zoom in for you. So now when I put my dies down you can see that anything that I type that fits within that box will fit inside of my Nestabilities die. They're going to fit perfectly just like that. Now what I do when I'm actually printing the one, um, when I'm actually printing them for my project is the borders on each table in my word processing tool I turn borders off so that um, these rectangles don't get printed. But I know that the words that I have in there are going to fit. So that's for the fancy tags. I'll show you the one for the grommet tags as well. And that's right here. And so you can see I did the same thing with that and they just fit in there real nicely. Now um, I'm going to make these available on my blog as a free download. Um, let me know if you're interested. I know how to do it. I just haven't taken the time to do it. So if you're interested in them, let me know and I'll make sure to put them up there as quickly as I can. But I hope this was a easy tip for you and if you have any other advice on how to use these guys um, with stamps or another way that you use, if you know of another template out there that may be easier, I'm all ears. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I thought I'd show you from within Microsoft Word how I use this file. I opened it up, I just named it Spellbinder Shape Abilities, and I have both pages in the same file. So the top one is the S4235 Fancy Tags, and say I'm printing these phrases off, all I'll do is click on that cell, and I scroll down to Borders and Shading, and I click that and then I click on none right there and you hit OK and that whole box is gone same thing here again borders and shading none and same thing with this one borders and shading none Now I don't save it like this because I want those borders to go back in there um, so I only do this right before I print, but I do not save it like this. Now, just in case I make a mistake, I do have a backup saved as well. I mean, this is really an easy fix if you mess it up, but if you're afraid, then just save yourself a backup file, and that way you don't have to worry about overwriting it. Okay? So for demonstration purposes, I will do the fancy tags and I'm going to print this page. Okay, so when I start with the Big Shot, I put down my multi-purpose platform with all tabs down. Tab 1 and 2, everything is down. Then I put my cutting plate. I usually put my messy one on the bottom for when I do nestabilities. Then I'll put my paper down with my phrase 
and what I do is here's the ridge edge you want the ridge edge to be cutting on your words and that's also where you want the embossing and everything to take place so the first time we run it through the big shot it is to just cut this all out so I will carefully lay that right there so it doesn't move and then I lay the other plate on top and then I'll cut it out. You'll hear the cracking. And I'll move it right back here just so you can see. And so there it is. Okay, so now I'll show how to emboss your nestability dies after you've cut it out. I experimented with my first two there. So you'll take your plate off and you'll pop your die out. Pops out just like that. Don't take the paper out yet. Flip it over this direction. Just like so. Take out this paper and just place it right on top of your your clear mat. You're going to remove everything out of your Big Shot, your multi-purpose platform, you're going to open to tab 1. Open to tab 1. Then put down your clear plate along with your nestability die on it and the piece you just cut out. Again, this is to do the embossing. Next is you get these two mats. They're from Spellbinders. There's two of them. They come in a package. You can get them for around five dollars. So they come together in a package. It's not by Sizzix. It's by specifically by Spellbinders. So you put those. Ooh, I have all kinds of static going on here. Put those on top of your nestability die. Take your last plate and put it on top and then feed that entire sandwich through your Big Shot. So when you take it out, you can pop it out of the die and all those details your word fits in there perfectly and it's perfectly embossed. Isn't that beautiful? So these look great just plain as they are and there's various different ways you can shade them by leaving the die on top of them um, just like this and then shading the inside. You can spray it with a mini mister. You can distress it. Um, some use their Copic airbrush system with it. Um, all different ways like that. This one I did a little bit differently. Um, I went ahead and sprayed the whole thing with Lindy Stamp Gang. I think this one is the Coral. And then I used Tim Holtz Walnut Distress Ink and um, inked all the edges with a sponge dauber. So you can make all kinds of different effects just by printing words off your printer and on using the nestability dies. Thanks for watching.